we are back and today we have a completed test system and our trendnet TG10 GECTX uh, gigabit PCIe network adapter and uh, if you missed the build of the test system there's going to go be a link to it in a card and there'll also be a link in the description below go ahead and check that out if you're curious about this system um, overall just a quick rundown we've got a 3770 uh, ThinkCenter M82 here with 32 gigs of RAM which is more than overkill for testing this little 10 gig network card we've got a low profile system so we'll be using the low profile adapter bracket that's included in the package um, with that out of the way before I install it since I've actually got you know, I, I, I installed it in that video, but I pulled the card out. I've got it back in the box here. Um, you can see we've already installed the low profile bracket, which was really easy. Two screws on and off, and off we go. And before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I just want to talk about this adapter itself. We were sent this adapter for review by TrendNet. Um, that's not going to stop us from being as blunt as we were with other things. Uh, if you want to go ahead and look back at the USB-C 5 gig adapter they sent us, we were pretty flat out with that, that unless you really had an absolute need for it, it wasn't necessarily the best investment of your money. Um, it worked. It wasn't that the product was flawed or anything. It just price to performance was not where it needed to be. Now this is another one that's really going to be determined by price to performance. Um, this is a 10 gig network adapter, which puts it in a completely different class performance wise, assuming that it performs the way it should. Um, however, at the Hundred and what's this? The GECTX. Hundred and twenty dollars. This is listed for. Um, that's actually not a bad price. So there's been Aquatina cards on the market for a while that run around a hundred dollars, and prior to those and this, your options were server grade cards that were several hundred dollars typically were SFP plus and would require fiber or direct attach cables, all of which were far more expensive than this. And uh, a piece of, I mean, this should work with 5e, but a piece of Cat6. Um, so we're in a completely different point where if you have a small NAS on your network, the idea that you can talk to it at 10 gig now is actually a reasonable thing. For comparison, I actually have a couple of cards. So this would have been a typical server adapter. I'm going to say five to 10 years ago. This is a card made by, I think this is, is this a Mellanox? Yeah. So this is a Mellanox Connect X2 card. Uh, it's a little bit on the older side. I use one of these in my desktop just fine. I've got a ConnectX3 card in my server. And this card, you know, purchased new, would have been $400 plus. Um, I remember spending $250 in 2000 and... 16 so four years ago now to get a dual port intel card and that was considered a good price then to get a dual port 10 gig card now this one was purchased on ebay for the you know princely sum of 40 dollars uh, but is still a 10 or uh, still an sfp plus so i can't use my existing infrastructure with it i can't attach it to um, a one gig network either and if I wanted to do either of those things now I have to go spend 
40 to $70 on a module to plug into it to go 10G base T. Or I need to uh, just go fiber, which means buying some fiber optic transceivers. And, you know, if you get those used, maybe you can get them for 20 bucks or so. And a run of fiber, which I can't terminate fiber at home. Um, so all of those things put this in a, it's still an enthusiast device. It's still not something your average user needs to run out and purchase. But it's also much easier to justify, assuming that it works properly, especially when looking at what the options available prior to today were. So, all that out of the way, I just wanted to frame, number one, how much smaller this is than its older Enterprise counterparts. Um, go line that up like that. Uh, we're looking at a much lower power device. Number two, from a functionality standpoint, if I go buy a 2.5G base T switch, which I can do now, I believe there was one that was launched for about a hundred bucks, and plug this in, that's it, I'm done. There's no fiber, I, I can just reuse all my existing cabling. If I go buy a 5G base T or 10G base T switch, this will work with those. The older adapters, not so much. So installation, pretty straightforward. Just unlock it. And it just kind of drops into the PCI Express slot here. Now this is a 4X card, so you'll need a 4X slot. Most modern systems offer at least one, if not more, 4X slots. And some of them had just have multiple 16s. Uh, drop it in, latch it in, that's all there is to it. Now the one thing we're not going to be covering is the driver install because to be honest, Windows picked it up and set it up right out of the gate. So it uh, just works, at least with Windows 10 build 2004. Uh, TrendNet does include a driver CD and does have drivers on their website. I don't actually know if the drivers got pulled in over Windows Update or if they were natively included because it did it before I could do anything. Um, so that's unfortunately a bit out of my hands. There we go. Oh, all the lovely beeps. Oh, hey, there's no keyboard. Um, just like during the build, I'm going to go ahead and use the K600 TV here. And I have a piece of category six here. Now, depending on your environment, is really going to dictate what type of cable you should or need to use. So this is category six, it's not fully shielded, it's just tested a little higher than uh, category five. Um, Cat5e theoretically should also work up to a certain distance. And I'll, uh, I'll bring up the chart, but basically the two factors that determine what kind of cable you want to use with one of these are distance and environment. The worse your RF environment is, the better you want your shielding on your cable. Uh, if you're doing a new install, I'm going to encourage you to get something like Category 6A just for better performance. Um, if you're using an existing install, you probably have 5E or Cat6 in the wall. That's not the end of the world. I'm using 6 here between uh, my switch, which interestingly enough, does have to utilize one of those $70 adapters I mentioned. I think I spent 40 and change. Um, that is the iPolex 10G based T adapter that we also used in the review of the USB C TrendNet card we covered. Um, 
since my switch is all SFP plus ports because all of my 10 gig networking is, uh, well, predates this kind of thing. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start OBS up first. And before we do anything, I'm gonna go ahead and go into my device manager and look at my network adapter. Cause I did do a little bit of poking at it once it was in, and this is the one thing out of the gate I'm going to tell you to change on a 2.55 or 10G base T adapter is to turn on jumbo frames. We're going to do some testing with them disabled first, and then we're going to turn them back on. And we'll talk about the differences there. If you remember before, I said that we couldn't just do a, um, a speed test. Because if I go, and it will spin up fast.com, that's great. You know, I've got gigabit internet service here, and depending on who's doing what, 770 megs, that's fine. I can do that on a standard Intel gigabit adapter. That doesn't do anything but tell me that this is connected to the internet. And that's one thing I'm going to tell you, is that 2.55 and 10G base T won't make your internet faster. A better router could improve your internet performance depending on what equipment you have, um, be it wired or wirelessly. I've seen bad routers impact performance. A better modem, if you're connected to cable internet, could improve performance. But once your adapter speed exceeds your internet speed, it's not going to help you any. So until I suddenly have two gig internet, you know, multi-gig fiber to the home, um, a, a 10 gig adapter like this is overkill for an internet connection. That doesn't mean that I don't have points in my network where I use that, but at least talking to the ISP, uh, a 10 gig link is wasted. So with that minor rant out of the way, these are gonna make your internet faster unless the network card that was in your system already was just garbage. And in that case, a regular gigabit adapter would have been fine or even moving from wireless to wired. So the real test we wanna run is the same one we used last time Alrighty, so we are going to go ahead and open up iPerf. And I'm just going to go ahead and use PowerShell for that. I'm going to tell this system as the client using the dash C flag. And then give it the address of the server. And off we go, and we're seeing Okay, well, four point something. That's great. Now, if you remember from the 5G base T adapter, I had to use dash, and I think it was a capital P, dash P4, to send multiple connections. And I think P4 may have been overkill. So first things first, let's just go ahead and try it on P2. And yeah, okay, so that's a little bit better. I can get, you know, five point something now. Excellent. That's not what this says on the box. And now we're gonna go back and we're gonna turn on jumbo frames. I mentioned that those were going to be important to really maximizing the performance here. So. It's just real simple. We go into jumbo frames and we're gonna bring them up to 9K. Let's quick change. Yeah, 
There we go, it's reconnected. So I'm just going to start off with the same initial test. So already single threaded, we went from four and change to we're going to say just about six, I mean 6.03 on the average, by turning on a command flag. Great. Now, typically I find that iperf actually does need to be told to run multiple sections in parallel. And look at that, 9.14, 906, 9.11. So if I go ahead and bring this up to four, I would hope that I see There we go. So, yeah, I can run this a couple of times, but it looks like all in all, um, I'm seeing the numbers I expect to see. You know, I'm seeing numbers just below nine, just above line nine, depending on how many processes I run in parallel. And that's, that's what I wanna see out of a card like this. Now I am going to, since P2 seem to be the best on average. Go ahead and run for dash S, I don't know, we'll run it for 120 seconds. Oh, right, not seconds, dash T for time. So we're gonna run that for a couple of minutes so just to get a, a much longer, better average uh, out of it, and why did? Why are my averages lower? All right. Gotta love random variance and testing. And this is why we run things for longer times to get averages. So we'll run dash P4 for a couple of minutes and just get a, a solid average performance number out of it. Um, so while that's running, what I want to talk about is really, you know, and I touched on it earlier, who is a card like this for? If you're building a workstation for video editing, photo editing, or some kind of network storage system, a card like this is a great advantage. Um, paired with an appropriate switch like a, a CRS312 from Microtik, um, a switch like this would let you run 10 gig over copper to most of your workstations, and you know what? If your link can't manage 10 gig because you're 100 meters away, these will auto-negotiate down to five or 2.5, and I'll, when this is done, actually forcibly tell it to negotiate at 2.5 and run a performance check just to make sure it works the way it's supposed to. Um, that is one of the benefits of 10 G base T is that it'll negotiate down theoretically, all the way down to gigabit if it has to. Um, so those are the people who this type of adapter is built for. If you're just gaming, um, if you're a, a typical home user who, you know, just watches Netflix and Hulu, um, or, you know, pokes around on Amazon, you know, eBay and things like that, Facebook, God, I hate Facebook. <laughs> but anyway, if you're just one of those typical home users who, you know, you, you've got a desktop, you use it for things, but you're you're not doing anything particularly demanding with it, or when you are, it's, it's just games, it's mostly content consumption, you're not creating anything, you don't have multiple systems in the network, it's overkill. Um, you know, the benefit of any kind of 10 gig backbone for that network is small um, and it's it is what it is unfortunately um, you know I want to say everyone needs 10 gig but quite frankly they don't and you know my home network is an ex actually an excellent example of both of those applications I have my own stuff I've got 10 gig between my server and my desktop which feeds a 10 gig trunk to the switch which talks to my wireless access points but 
everything else, I mean, my TVs, the Chromecast, they're all even wireless. I haven't bothered to wire any of them. Um, I've got a gigabit line running to a desktop in the one in, if, in the living room to play emulators on. And, uh, you know, that's just not necessary for anyone really outside of myself at home. Um, and that's because I do things like this. I, I have video on my server. I have video on my workstation. My server is also a Plex server, and I don't want to infringe on the bandwidth there. That's why it's got the 20 gig symmetric link to the switch so that everybody's traffic has plenty of room to, to move. <laughs> um, so content creators, uh, semi-pros, people like that, this is going to be absolutely a great card and and at 120 bucks for the current list price or a bit lower it, it's fluctuated some thanks to the current health crisis um, it's not a bad price and it's completely fanless it doesn't seem to draw any excessive amount of power um, I'm gonna say it's rated for less than five watts I don't even think they bothered giving me a power usage on it. So, yeah, they, they didn't even bother specifying the actual power draw. Um, it's sufficiently low. And I'll, I'll throw it up in text afterwards because it's nothing compared to the old, even fiber based network adapters. So our two minute run finished, we're looking at, it transferred 130 gigabytes at 10 gigs a second. Well, 9.55. Once you're over nine, the things you're playing with are line quality and random variants typically. There might be more things that you can do to improve performance on either end. Um, so, you know, in the driver here, there, there's more tweaking that you can do to really pick some of that up. It actually lets me pick what NUMA node it's I identified on. That doesn't matter on a consumer desktop like this. There's only one node. Um, my main workstation that I edit videos on, there's two nodes. I can pick which CPU it's attached to. Um, IPv4 checksum offload, that's great. That's some hardware acceleration. I've got some scaling options, I've got some buffer options that will tweak what kind of performance is that. But honestly, you plug it in, turn on jumbo frames, once you're over 9 gigs a second, great. Alright, so let's see here. I'm going to take my link speed and we're going to set it to... 2.5G and I'm picking 2.5G specifically because there was recently some buzz about a hundred dollar five port 2.5G switch that uh, launched recently and I'll include a link to one of the articles about that in my description uh, probably the Enantech one and a purchase link if I can find one but that switch is a it's a dumb plug it in and forget it switch for home networks and that's the kind of thing that we really need for multi-gig to become adopted and i'm going to go ahead and set this just take out that time flag we're going to see what it does at 2.5 um, so the reason that's important is home users don't typically manage their equipment. I've got a managed smart switch here, but your average home user doesn't want to sign into it. They just want to plug it in and get it to work. And even small environments, you know, I, I needed PoE and I wanted a mix of one gig and 10 gig uplinks and a couple of other features. A five port switch, you don't need VLANs, you don't need any of that stuff, and it just helps cut down on the cost that it's a dumb, simple switch. Um, I would have liked to have seen a 5 gig uplink on it, but hopefully we get some with those soon. Anyway, so 2.5 gig link, it pulled 2.4 gigabits a second, fantastic. And if we go ahead 
and we'll try five because that's what the other adapter was actually rated for just just to see what a 5g adapter should have performed like oh, gotta wait for it to reconnect there we go um, 4.89 perfect so those are the numbers that I want to see on a 5 gig adapter so I, I expect these to be fairly popular. Um, I expect to see them in home-built NAS units. I think some of the QNAP and Synology NAS units actually support PCI Express upgrades, but it would have to be double-checked on a unit-by-unit -unit basis if it supported this specific card. Since they keep those fairly locked down compared to just rolling your own with something like FreeNAS, or I think it's TrueNAS Core now. Um, honestly, that's all there is to it. This is kind of dead simple compared to its USB-C counterpart. Uh, we turned on jumbo frames. We had to adjust, you know, how many streams of data we were sending to really push the link, but it performed 100% as intended. We were able to establish links at 2.5 and 5 G, G base T. So it's going to talk to other equipment that's capable of those rates. No problem. Um... Kind of uh, plug it in and forget it. Honestly, I'm I'm impressed. The price at 120 bucks is a little higher than I want it to be. An adapter like this, really, that that hundred dollar mark is where I start to t think to myself, well, maybe I can go buy a piece of used server gear on eBay, and then some fiber, and then some SFPs. Um, but that's also all contained to my own personal equipment, and your mileage may vary buying used equipment. You know it. If it's used, you buy it on eBay, maybe you're lucky if you get a dud and can return it. Sometimes you're not. Um, but, you know, new in box and with, I believe it's a one-year warranty. Uh, three-year warranty. All right, yeah. New in box with three-year warranty. If you get a dud, you just call TrendNet. Hey, it's busted. And you're off to the races. Um, and TrendNet does have some smaller... Mix 2.55 and 10G base T switches uh, that will work with it perfectly well. So you don't have to go to exotic equipment for it, even. I do want to go ahead and thank our patrons who help support some of this content. Um, although this particular adapter was sent to us by TrendNet, our patrons do help when, you know, I need to do things like refurbish this piece of equipment. Um, every, every bit helps. I want to go ahead and thank our patrons for helping make some of this content possible. I also want to shout out to Electrix for providing our opening and closing themes. And if you have any questions or comments about, you know, hey, I wanted to see this test, or hey, what is this that I completely skipped covering, which I think I covered everything on this, uh, let me know in the comments below. And I'll try and follow it up and answer either of the comments, or depending on what it is, maybe make a, a full video just answering your question. Thank you for watching.